when I think about Pete Fowler, I think about a, a wonderful person, a giant among men, someone that always seemed to have time for people and to share his thoughts and ideas and go out of his way to to help. You know, he, he just went so far out of his way to 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 make everyone else's lives better. It was uh, an incredible man. You know, I, I look back to you know a number of things that went on, but uh, you know his humor was was fantastic. You know, uh, starting with I used to be a Greek god, now I'm just a goddamn Greek. You know, he had some real some real uh, some real moments with the humor, dry, quick, very witty. Um, always got uh, always got things laughing a little bit and uh, and and lighten the situation. I I don't think we you know Western would have got that grant uh, from the NHL Players Association for the concussion work had he not had uh, been the person he he, he was and, and have the connection that he did to to Paul Beeston and to Don Fear. I don't think that 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 thing uh, goes through without without his help. He's helped so many people and. Uh, he was a fantastic, fantastic person. Just a fantastic person, and uh, I certainly feel blessed to uh, have had the opportunity to uh, to know him. I'm here in beautiful Whistler, British Columbia. I just spent five days ripping it up on the slopes here, and I have Dr. Fowler to thank because almost 30 years ago he replaced my ACL. And no, I did not tear it after five years of racing on the World Cup circuit, going almost 140 kilometers an hour. I tore it on a rope toe at Talisman when a very large person fell on me that I was teaching. Dr. Fowler thought that was the most hilarious story and every time I saw him, we had a little chuckle. So thank you, Dr. Fowler, the entire Fowler family. My knee's as good as new and I am forever thankful and grateful to have your signature on my knee. But I just wanted to say thank you to Dr. Fowler for passing down his knowledge to so many people in the industry, especially everybody at the Fowler Kenley Clinic and Bob Litchfield, so they can help people like us in the future just through Dr. Fowler's knowledge and what he's learned throughout his career. Uh, he was the best guy in the world, the gentle, soft touch, and he really knew how to treat people well and uh, make them feel comforted like I was so many times when I saw him. When I think of Dr. Fowler, I first think of one of the country's preeminent best sport doctors and surgeons. So many of my uh, friends and athletes of my era who had emergencies needed to see Dr. Fowler to get their careers back on track. I was so lucky because I'd never had to see Dr. Fowler in that capacity. I didn't have any bad injuries, but I got to know him as a family friend. I'm good friends with his daughter, Megan, and had the really good fortune of hanging out at Devil's Glen and in London with Dr. Fowler and family. And just what a great man, really a, a treasure, a member of the Order of Canada, much missed, much loved, and thanks for, for all you did, Dr. Fowler. I was so fortunate to grow up with the Fowler family here at Devil's Glen. Pete had to put me back together a couple of times, and he was always so available and convenient. I just had to go to his chalet doorstep with a six pack of Cremor, and he would give me the full diagnosis of what I had done, and he kept my dream alive. With his expertise, I was able to continue ski racing on the World Cup circuit. Not only was Devil's Glen lucky that we had Pete on the property, but he was so well respected around the world. I was down in Florida on a trip and I, I met this gentleman and through our conversation, he was telling me that he was a retired orthopedic surgeon. And then through that conversation, he found out that I was a retired ski racer. And his first question was, well, who did your surgeries? And when I said, oh, uh, Dr. Peter Fowler, there was this long stare and he looked at me and he said, you know, Pete Fowler is God. Anyway, thanks, Pete. Love you tons. Thank you. Dr. Fowler was many things to me. Teacher, doctor, he was dad to my classmate, Tim, and my friend, Megan. And more than anything, for the 15 years I was in London, I knew Pete to be a curious and kind community builder. Pete built community by being a connector. He had an incredible way of building us all up by showing us how we connected to each other. He showed by his example how we could help each other be better and stronger. It was simple. When he felt like he could help, he'd try. He'd reach out. And the effect was making this big world seem like a small, connected community. When I was training in Victoria, uh, fundraising for our cash strap team, I got a call from Pete and he connected me to his friend, Glenn Davis, who would become our rowing team's most meaningful supporter. 
when I was in Australia withdrawing from the Olympics because of a blown disc, I got an email from Pete and he connected me to Dr. Kevin Gurr, who he'd actually set up the appointment already. And I got the help and the surgery I needed. And when I blew my ACL, Pete connected me to Bob Litchfield, who is still repairing me when I break myself. I'm so grateful because of all the many things Pete was for me. I'm lucky to say he was also a friend. We all miss Pete and I'm gonna do my best to follow his example, to be kind and curious, to reach out, to connect, and to build people and create community. Thanks to my friendship with Pete's son, Tim, I have now been friends with the Fowlers for close to 50 years. I am so fortunate to have known Dr. Fowler both personally and professionally. The first thing that comes to mind is just how generous he was with this time. As young kids, he introduced us to the importance of warming up properly before practice and games. During our games, he was always a fixture near the gate in case there was an injury to either team. Now that I think about it, it usually ended up being Tim. When I became a professional athlete, he saw me at the clinic and graciously at his home. I had so much respect for him and he always made me feel like I could call any time. Every time I saw him, he spoke so proudly of his family. And each time I visit the clinic, which happens to be a lot, I am reminded of this great man's legacy. Pete, you are missed. Like all of you, I'm sure, last fall I was very saddened to hear the news of, of Dr. Fowler's passing. I actually met Pete in the summer of 2002 while I was down at the University of Alabama, Birmingham, visiting two orthopedic surgeons, Dr. Uh, Bill Clancy and Dave Andrews. Uh, I was down, we were debating the, the pros and cons of having knee reconstructive surgery or something they introduced me to called an osteotomy. Dr. Andrews, after much discussion, uh, Dr. Andrews uh, recommended that I travel to London, Ontario to see Dr. Pete Fowler, somebody that they both had great respect and admiration for clearly and felt that he was one of the leading orthopedic surgeons in particular in, in, the, uh, in the procedure of, an oste of osteotomies. So sure enough, I was able to get a, an appointment. I think it was actually the weekend of July 1 and traveled to London and uh, the, the clinic was very quiet actually. It was really just Pete and, and one of his residents. And they couldn't have been more patient and, uh, and more attentive to me, explaining the pros and cons of, of an osteotomy, what exactly the procedure was, uh, going over MRIs, x-rays and whatnot. Pete literally had a piece of paper out uh, sketching uh, uh, draw examples and diagrams explaining to me exactly the procedure um, and it, I was so grateful that they that he took the time uh, to really give me a full understanding of what to expect and really what the outcome would be. In fact, uh, he said he had really suggested that I have this procedure. He felt very comfortable in doing it, that I was a very good candidate for it, and also really recommended that have the procedure and retire from hockey, that I was still a relatively young person, that I had a lot of uh, a, a long uh, life and tried to get a lot of mileage out of my legs. So he was really wasn't wasn't concerned with me as an athlete. Uh, he was more as a uh, concerned as a person. The the time he took, the sense of humor, uh, the jokes that he made, uh, some of the language that he used during my meeting, uh, I really enjoyed it. And I drove back to Detroit uh, feeling really good and very comfortable with the procedure which which he performed shortly after that. And although I did ignore his his. Uh, his advice and did return to play uh, um, uh, very briefly after that. Here we are 20 plus years later and I, and I actually still going strong. Well, that's debatable as well, but still, still uh, on the same knee. And uh, I have a chance now to reflect on the great care that he gave me, uh, the great advice that he gave me, the humility, the sense of humor that he showed, the patience patience that he showed and even more so uh, having being around, being around him and the people around him, how he treated everyone and the way everyone looked up to him and admired him and, 
and really adored him. So uh, I'm very appreciative of the, the time that I got to spend with him. I'm very appreciative of the care that he gave me and and the, and literally just the time that I got to spend with him and get to know him. He had a tremendous effect, uh, impact on all the people that he met, a tremendous impact on medicine in Canada and throughout the world for that matter. And he made, he left the world a better place.